My name is Selena and I'm an educator at the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium and today we're going to be learning a little bit about water testing. For our water testing that we are doing today, we're going to be using these three water samples, sample one, sample two, and sample four. Um, and each of these samples looks pretty close in similarity. They're all kind of clear water samples, but they are all a little bit different. And to kind of determine what is different about these samples today, we're gonna to be looking at two different aspects. For one, we are going to be testing whether or not they are fresh or salt water samples using our refractometer. We are also going to be testing whether they are acidic or basic or alkaline using our pH tester. For our first test, we are going to be testing the amount of salt in each of these samples. And we're going to be using a, something called a refractometer. These refractometers are actually going to be able to read the parts per thousand of salt that is present in the water. So our refractometer looks a little something like this. It can be very helpful um, in aquarium situations and trying to read how much salt is present to make sure that everyone is happy and healthy. Here we have our refractometer, which is going to allow us to look at the amount of salt that is present in our samples by reading through the water that we put onto our tube here. We can actually read to see if there is a lot of salt present. Um, our blue line is going to go up, indicating how much salt is there. And if there's not a whole lot of salt in our sample, then our line will not move and will stay down at the bottom where it says one. For our first sample, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of water onto our refractometer here. Close our lid so we can observe. We're gonna take a look inside. So as you guys can see for sample one, our blue line did not really move from the bottom. So most likely this is going to be a fresh water sample. Now we're gonna put a little bit of water from sample two onto our refractometer and see what we get. All right, so as you guys might notice, our blue line did go up therefore indicating that we do have a salt water solution as our sample number two. Now for our final sample, let's see if our sample number four is fresh or salt water. Looking at our refractometer, we see just like what we saw in sample one, and we do have another case of fresh water. Now that we have learned that sample one and sample four are both fresh water solutions and sample two is a salt water solution, we can now test their pH to test if they are acidic or if they are alkaline or basic in our examples here. And these are going to help to determine kind of a little bit of the differences. So even though they all look exactly the same, we're going to see which might be better environments for fish, animals, and plants to live in, and which might not be so good for them. To test how acidic or basic it is, we're going to be using something called a pH tester. This is a handy little tool. Um, all we have to do is insert it into the sample and it will give us a reading right away. Water testing is extremely important, especially when looking at how acidic or alkaline something is, such as our acids and bases. So something being acidic is closer to zero or one on our scale of pH. And something that is gonna be a little bit more basic um, or alkaline is going to be more on the higher end of our pH scale. Uh, something that's perfect just for us is going to be in the seven or the neutral range. As you guys can see, that's where a lot of our animals survive um, and need this kind of acidity in order to thrive in their environments. So for that kind of testing, we are going to be using our three samples here and using what we call a pH tester. For sample one, let's see what we have here. It is reading at about 6.0, which if we look on our scale, is a good, happy place to be. Next, we're gonna try out sample two to see whether it is acidic or basic. Looks like our salt water solution, again, is resting right at that six level, maybe a little bit in between. So therefore, it too is a safe environment for our fish. And finally, we have sample four, 
we're gonna test what the pH of this sample is here. And it looks like it's reading closer to 8.8 .8 or 9, which we can see that is okay for some of our crabs and snails. Um, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too basic for our streams. Um, and so some of our animals that live in our streams might not really like this freshwater environment so much, and it might not be very safe for them. So again, here are our three samples that we tested today. And we found out they are all a little bit different in their own ways, even though they all do look very similar to one another. Watering testing is extremely important so we can understand the environments around us and understand what is good and bad for our fish and our plants and even for ourselves. And today, we're gonna to be making our own water cycle in a jar. All right, for our project today and talking about water, we're gonna talk about how the earth naturally recycles water on its own using something called the water cycle and through the processes of evaporation condensation and precipitation. For this project, you guys can do this at home. All you're gonna need is a jar. I just pulled one out of my recycling bin, so a good way to upcycle some of your stuff that you might have. Some permanent markers. If you have multiple colors, you can use a couple colors for that. And just a little bit of water. All right, to do our science experiment, we're actually gonna be making our own little water cycle in this jar. So to do so, we kind of have to indicate what we're seeing here. So I've got my Sharpie, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line about half an inch from the bottom of my container all the way around. And this line right here, that's going to represent our water line or where our liquid is gonna be, such as like our pond or our ocean or a puddle that we see down at the bottom. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to give a source of energy to our water cycle, aka our sun. So up here in the corner, I'm actually going to draw a nice little sunshine to represent our powerhouse in our water cycle here. After my sunshine, I'm actually going to draw some clouds representing our water cycle. All right, so next is to connect the dots all together from all of these. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna draw an arrow from our water down here to the bottom up to our sunshine. And that is going to represent the process of evaporation. And that's kind of when those water molecules heat up from the sun and they start to evaporate or they start to kind of separate and speed up really, really fast and start to rise up to the sky. So I'm gonna label that evaporation. Once they get up so high in the sky, they actually start to cool down and they start to condense. They start to all kind of gather together next to little particles of gas up in the sky there. And they start to clump together and these, as you guessed it, those are gonna be our clouds. So from our sunshine to our cloud, we're gonna draw another arrow and we're gonna label that as condensation. From here, our clouds start to get big and puffy. Once they start to hold too much water or too much liquid, they can't hold it anymore. What happens from there? It starts to rain, right? And we call this precipitation. So we're gonna draw an arrow from our cloud down to our water, label it precipitation. Now for some of the fun parts, if you wanted to, you can take some other colored Sharpies I'm gonna add some precipitation into my mix here. Give it some raindrops falling, maybe a nice little snowflake back down into my water system. From here, I have everything prepared so I can understand, I can see what's happening as it is happening. And so all I have to do left is I'm gonna open up my nice clean jar that I have here. We're gonna add in some of that quality H2O. We're gonna fill it all the way up to our water line that we had made here. So we can kind of judge and understand either how much water is still there or how much water might have evaporated. We're gonna seal this up nice and tight. I'm gonna leave it outside here into the sunshine so that way it can start to work its water cycle process. You guys can observe this from home or from your houses um, and kind of watch and observe and see what happens. See if you start to notice some changes going on with your glass. See if your water level changes down at the bottom. Maybe just kind of understand what's going on in our big huge system of earth right here in our small little upcycled water cycle. Thanks for joining guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. 
Hey everybody, Christian here. I want to just thank you for watching our content. If you enjoyed, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Also, as you guys know, we are going through some very tough times and our hearts at the Science Center goes out to everyone that's been affected by this coronavirus outbreak. And as most of you also know, we are a nonprofit organization. We rely very heavily on live programs as well as admissions in order to keep the Science Center lights on. So because we're not open, we do need your help. If you enjoyed our content, please consider hitting that donate button down below and giving anything you can. One dollar, five dollars, any amount will help us continue our mission to open every mind to science.